So I'm getting ready to tie all this tops around and um, I just wanted to explain a little bit about tile work before I get started. So um, I am not a professional tiler but I have done a good amount of tile work and I find that the most important part of doing a good tile job is planning. And it takes a little while, but it's important. And um, you're better off to just take the time in the beginning to do it <laughs> than to be stuck in the middle and have something that you're not able to work with. So uh, in this particular tile job, I'm using a border here. And so what I've done is taken the level and drawn a line here, a vertical line. Um, and I've drawn it just a little shy of where I want the tile to go so that the tile will cover the line because, um, you know, just easier to have that than to deal with trying to cover this um, permanent marker up with paint because sometimes that doesn't go well. And um, so the design idea is basically this border going up to the top and then this little accent piece here. And then we're going to do the field tile, um, you know, everywhere else. We'll just have this black accent that goes up and kind of over and around. So um, the first thing is the vertical line, just because I'm doing this border here. Um, the other thing I did was just to try to keep everything level, I drew these level lines um, all around here. And this backer board has lines in it, but you can't count on those to be level. This one here is almost level. Um, but, you know, depending on how you have to attach them, um, they're not necessarily going to go up level. And this one is really not level over here. So you have to just draw your own lines here. I mean, other people do it other ways. They might just have a little level with them and just keep checking it. You know, that's another way to go. But I'm really messy when I tile and everything that I use starts to get covered in, you know, mortar and everything. So having the little level is a little bit worse for me than just drawing some, some lines here. And then, you know, you just draw them periodically so you can just kind of eyeball it and make sure everything's level. And um, the other thing is planning how you want to lay out the tiles, like whether you need to start in the center and work out or whether it makes a difference. And you can just start on the end and just go from one end to the other. And a lot of times with a subway tile, it doesn't make a difference. Um, here on this end, I'm just going to start from, you know, this most visible part where we have the end here and just work my way into the corner. And on this one, I'm gonna start um, on the other end and just work my way into this corner too because I feel like this, um, and that has the shower head and everything is more of the focus. So um, I'll start with the full piece over there. But um, I did check it first because sometimes if you lay it out that way, you end up with like a tiny sliver over here or something that's really hard to cut or, you know, it's just best to lay it all out. And I just, um, rather than trying to measure everything, I just lined up the tiles here just to you know, to see where they would fall at the end. And um, it ends up being like almost the same, but, and you know, the way the end looks, whether it's centered or whether I start on that end. And it's just easier, much easier to start on that end because you have less, uh, less cuts. <laughs> All right, so the other thing that um, you need to take into account when you're doing your planning is trying to keep everything level. So this backer board here is, you probably can't see it, but <clears throat> it's really not, uh, yeah, it's just, the, it dips way, way in. You know, there are some really high spots and really deep dips. And actually when I was running the level lines, that's when I could really just see just how exaggerated it is. So um, you're gonna have to, take that into account and make sure that um, you can always bring everything up to where it'll match the tile that's at the highest point. So basically what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up with a lot of uh, mortar um, 
behind these deep dips to bring them out to the, you know, to be flush with everything else. Um, and you can use um, the level to do that too. You don't necessarily need one that's this long, but um, you know, as you're doing it, you can just kind of place a level on the tile just to see if everything is, you know, flat to, to each other. So, um, and the corners here are really wonky as you can see. So I'm not gonna end up getting, which is another reason that I thought doing centered might not necessarily matter because those pieces on the end are not gonna be, you know, the same as each other anyway, once, you know, up and down because the wall just goes wavery, <laughs> you know, so. Um, anyway, so I just um, wanted to cover that just to give you an idea of how, um, you know, how I approach this uh, getting started. So I'm going to start with this border and um, before applying any of the tiles, I applied this um, waterproof membrane, this red um, brush-on product to help uh, create a more waterproof environment here, you know, in the shower surround. I'm using a thin set mortar. And I, I usually buy a uh, pre-mixed, but um, it is much more expensive to buy pre-mixed. And um, I've been spending so much you know, money here at the property that I'm just, you know, trying to save money. So I got the kind that you mix yourself, which is much cheaper, but you know, less convenient. But anyway, so I just use my notch trowel. I have a little one here for, you know, fire work. And then I have this larger one that I'll use for the field tiles. So, um, space underneath these tiles just a teeny bit um, just to you know so everything's not smack against the tub um, just in case you know for expansion and contraction and whatnot um, yeah maybe just a little space so I discovered that this tub is not level you can see here how it's you know Mm, pretty far off um, so what I've had to do is start spacing out these grout lines uh, from this end and kind of phasing that out towards the other end to try to bring this um, tile closer to level here we go yeah it's getting can't, I don't know if you can see that but it's getting uh, a bit closer to level. around and um, it was like a disaster <laughs> let me just say everything was wrong here um, as you can see it is uh, full of shimming to try to make up for the fact that the tub was unlevel and um, you know everything else was just super wavy and just completely a mess everywhere here there everywhere <laughs> But uh, anyway, um, I was able to level out these dips quite a bit. So it's still, you know, it still dips in. It's like a wave, but it's much less pronounced than it was before. So um, it'll be fine. I think once everything is grouted with the, you know, the white grout, um, I don't think you'll really see, um, you know, really notice these things. And there's nothing being mounted on this wall. So um, I think that you know, having a slight wave in it is not going to be a problem. I will be mounting a shelf onto this wall, and I think the portion where the shelf will be mounted is level enough that uh, that will work. 
And uh, the other weird issue here was this um, wall. Uh, to make this border go up uh, straight, um, it ended up extending beyond this wall, which is not straight. And um, so I would prefer to have it level, you know, so I just ended up um, reinforcing this with some mortar so it'll be nice and strong, you know, for when we put the um, shower rod in or if anyone leans on it or anything. And um, I will fill this all in with a compound and it'll basically form a new little wall right there. So um, anyway, this is done for now. The next step is to do the floor tile. Um, I removed the toilet here so that I can get back here and um, work on this wall a little bit and reach this better. And uh, anyway, uh, I'm excited that this part is done and uh, on to the next.